OK, so we're very excited today. This is our Christmas version of the podcast because... As we record this, it's not quite Christmas yet. What is and I that? I couldn't find my Christmas hat. It's a stock here. I'm trying to find a hat. What I have got, what I have got is uh, Santa. Mm-hmm. The decorations um, out. Those, those that are just listening to podcasts, you need to check this out on, um, on YouTube. The video. I did the not videos. get the pre-production memo about Christmas yes, attire. I've no, just come in black on a big grey background. I don't look very Christmassy at all. <laughs> yeah. But me and Santa here have got a few little uh, questions. So we are the, we're having a break next week for Christmas. So this is the last podcast before Christmas, um, as well as wishing, obviously, everyone a happy Merry Christmas. Um, we, uh, we wanted to uh, take that. We, we would normally have a Christmas theme to, uh, to one of the podcast episodes in and around These are Christmas. traditionally our most unstructured podcasts of the year. And some people are thinking, <laughs> crikey. In our, in our format this year, we've been relatively unstructured for a while. But we can get loosey-goosey on the <laughs> Christmas one. I feel, it's, I feel Christmas is a time where you can say what you want to say. What, what was that, Santa? <laughs> um, yes, no, exactly. And... Um, what we're, before we get into uh, some of the stuff that we're going to find out a little bit about, I want to know um, the, the, the types of your classical Christmassy uh, things of, of uh, like, for, for us, there's a certain movie you watch in the house that means, okay, now it's Christmas, as in, like, everything else is off, work is finished, like, we're just going in, in into that. And then, uh, but before we get stuck into some of the detail and a little bit about, like, what... Uh, training and things have been like in this last year as we reflect a little bit on what's what's happened over time you may be getting excited already and a number of you have signed up for the bodyweight basics six-week course that's starting on the 11th of january um their places are limited on it uh, there is a discount if you are a soc member it's only 99 quid you get lifetime access to all of the video tutorials the live sessions to watch back on replay but with the main one of the main obviously elements of it is you've got six weeks structured um training with us um and uh, that starts on the 11th of january live coaching and, jacko uh, i heard live coaching it is on zoom but that makes it accessible to anyone and everyone uh, in the world that's got the internet and you can uh, and you can you know if you haven't got the internet you've probably got a lot bigger problems in life than um, well, you're going to be doing well to listen to this to sort out your training. that's a good point um yeah, yeah, crikey! You've blown, you've just blown my mind. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, literally, if you're if you're one of the people that are like, nah, I don't like online. I want to come in. Uh, I want to come to an in-person workshop. We have a new school of calisthenics workshop, the Movement, Strength, and Play Experience, uh, starting or uh, kicking off the new year in February, one in March. Uh, check out details. So they're all on the website where uh, the page for workshops, whether it's online or in person. Check those out if you haven't yet. And we look forward to seeing you either online or in person in 2020. Just in case someone sat there going, I'm going to stay with the Christmas theme and thinking pigs in blankets. If someone's going, all you've done is put lipstick on a pig. It's actually your old workshop just with a new name. It's not. It's new. It's going to be all different. Yes. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Santa then. No, we're gonna we haven't just we haven't just renamed it. We've actually yep. come up with a completely different concept. I think it's arguably better. For where <laughs> well, we would I would argue, Tim, that if it wasn't better, we wouldn't well, be no, doing it. The, so I would say it's definitely well, it's, better. But what we've done before well, is good. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done the first one, so um, yeah. you know, those that come to the first one. Who doesn't one want to will, go will to be... movement strength and play experience? I do, and I've got to teach it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um so are we gonna have a jingle for Christmas? We should do. Yeah, have you something. got a have you got a Christmassy have we got a Christmas oh, version crack, of it? Post -produ I'll, I'll speak to the post production department and see if I see if they not me. It's not can me. Roll something. Can put some Maybe just jingles a, over the top some, of it. Bells. Wiggle some bells or Let something. Me I used to do you know, um when uh, when I was when I was a kid I was an altar boy and one of one of my jobs was uh you know, lift the cup up, I'd, I'd you uh, what you it was really exciting to do. You know, like the you'd have to it was a Catholic church. You had to like ding, 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 roll the roll. That was literally rolling. The, I've always been rolling the jingle. Basically, even at church. I'm going to um, <laughs> even at church. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, ding, um, ding, ding. I, I can't think. I can't. I, it was like four little bells. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, Is that right? I, well, I'll see. I'll, I'll see if the the, um, the soundboard in Garage Band <clears throat> has got a, has got a jingle on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's roll that Christmas jingle. Listen, players, 
You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Okay, Timbo, on the Christmas theme and feeling Christmassy, hopefully, I don't... We're, as we're recording this now, I don't know whether you managed to make that into a jingle. Sorry, I don't know whether the post yeah, not me, not you, um, was able to <laughs> make that into it. Let's let's assume we're now feeling uh, Christmassy. I've got Santa with me, um, and Santa wants to know um, what is your favourite Christmas song? Oh, favourite Christmas. We're going to come song. to training questions later, but just to start with, that's a good question. Um, I haven't prepped him on this. He doesn't no. know. You didn't know this was. Corin and I actually in our house we have we have a pre-Christmas like album class playlist. So it's, we don't listen to it any of the time of the year, and it's it's an album that my dad introduced me to, and it's a proper oldies. Like I didn't even know who the guy was. <laughs> it's a guy called Steve Tyrell. He's like a bit of a jazzy sort of got a sort of jazz kind of like crooning kind of kind of flavor to it which i like so that he's he's can, like can you sing no, us a bit he's very <laughs> he's like pre-christmas because it's not entirely christmas music but it's that kind of vibe uh, he has got a christmas art album yeah but then when we get into christmas um we like a plethora and when you say when you say into christmas is that are we talking now we're in december because i remember being in september being in sainsbury's and i nearly threw up mm. because there was loads of like christmas stuff out and i was like it's september What's going on, people? I remember you saying that, and you go, I'm never going to Sainsbury's again. And then I was like, well, they'll yeah. have it in Audi by next week, I promise you, because they all start early. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Hey, I will not have a bad thing said about Audi. <laughs> um, the, 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 the Christmas time music, like, everyone likes a bit of Buble, don't they? That's a bit of a, like a, a bit of cliche. Gwen Stefani's Christmas album is pretty good. I've got a soft spot for Gwen Stefani. Um, <laughs> Corin knows about that. That won't Ooh. come as a surprise. <laughs> 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 um, and... Have you got an out? Like I've, I've got an out and out. Like this is my. Well, here's up, here's know. the guilty pleasure that I like at Christmas. Um, e seventeen stay. <laughs> That's an absolute banger at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever, if I ever see anyone with um, a, a hood, a hood on their jacket that's got like fur on. Always give, always give it a bit of Brian Harvey. Wait, no, that was classic. That's, that always makes Stay me think. now, baby. If you... no more. <laughs> give us a note. Right, um, mine is hands down Fairy Tale of New York. You like that one? Um, that is just that's funny up. because we that's even... one. If it comes on, I'll skip that. Oh, it's done no. to death. No, no. no. How we differ, Jack? Um, how we differ? We did a we when we was uh, when I was playing rugby. We did a um, a cover to it. Nottingham Rugby. Uh, uh, yeah, people can check that out. It's still that, on actually. YouTube. Um, and uh, the only other one I'd say is I don't really like the song that much, but if you are driving home for Christmas... That is good, yeah. And that comes on whilst you're driving, it does... There is a certain vibe in the car, and I will be singing. I've got one, actually. If you are in your car now, and you've got, like, voice, you've got Siri or whatever, when you finish listening to the podcast, if you want a little bit of calm over Christmas, I've got... Um, this, this, got this, this song turned me on. That doesn't mean in the right way. <laughs> turned me... It turned, uh, focused my... Or brought my awareness to a, an artist called Tony Anderson. Now, he is my deep work go-to now, so he's proper focus music. Classical... Love it, some strings, da da da. Um, type in or, or say into your, your voice recognition, Emmanuel, Tony Anderson, and just get some Christmas chill. You can send me a message if you listen to that on the, on the social because I guarantee it is it's impossible not to enjoy around Christmas. There you go. Is, is, is that available on Android if people haven't upgraded their life yet to iPhone? <laughs> I, I, I would imagine it's available on your listening um, platform, Spotify, Deezer, Apple Music, all the good ones. Okay, great. Then, my, so before before a few little like training, and I've got some questions on like philosophy actually Ooh. around around training. But um, before we do that, just on the Christmas theme, um, as I said before, there's a uh, there's a movie in our house that you watch that to signal, like, uh, and my sister is the same. It's is we're, we're we're all in on the same thing. And, but do do you have do you have a yes um, a Christmas movie? Is it is it significant? Yes. <laughs> okay and when are you going to watch it this year when things wind down for, i'm still not in christmas mode yet as we record but have this, you got a date yet i've got a date with Catherine because i oh, guess really? it's a different like because um well as, as, as a date as in the day that she finishes okay. we're watching it that i night. don't i to be honest don't really start to feel super christmasy until we're in the 20s so 20th onward Ooh. because it just then starts to feel like people start to leave you alone a little bit more don't they like work calms <laughs> down i've said this christmas the trouble is I find that I probably very similar, but then it's like 
I haven't bought any presents yet. Uh, and then it's like, oh, then I'm in a mad rush. Yeah, to we've, we've, it's like, oh, I'll have to get Prime so I can get me out where mm. order everything off Amazon so it comes the next be day. Be careful with that one. Uh, anyway. Shout out, shout out to Daryl, the, the, the delivery driver <laughs> that uh, comes down. <laughs> Or oh, just all the delivery drivers out there. Shout out to you. My next door neighbor is a postman. He's working his socks off at the moment. Is it um, anyway, Christmas movies. You ready? The I think I know what it the is. The Grinch. Yeah, which is which is interesting because I'm not a I'm not a great I'm not. Listen I'm not to me. Grinch. Listen to me. <laughs> listen, listen now. Yeah, listen. Yeah. Move away from the Who's. When you watch The Grinch, the best thing about The Grinch movie is not Whoville or The Who's or May or Mayor Who... I forget what his name. Mayor, Mayor Mayhew. <laughs> what? It's like there's all that whole story going on. Jim Carrey's performance at the, as The Grinch is Oscar worthy. I feel like it's one of the most underappreciated performances. There's some great little one-liners in there that he slips in and it just needs a little bit of, like, <laughs> attention. Um, Jim, yeah, J Jim Carrey is uh, is, yeah. is is world the Grinch is, isn't it? For me, that is our Christmas movie. We put that on, and then Christmas has begun. Um, <laughs> for us, it is Elf. Yeah, so I'm I don't know how old Elf is, but um, yeah, looking forward to uh, just look. Yeah, looking forward to to watching it. It's the uh, it's ridiculous as it is entertaining. Bad Santa's quite um, good as well. Have you seen that? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's one for when the kids are in bed. <laughs> and then you got the classic snowman as well actually yeah, there's many bits of many chances, yeah. yeah grinch is the one right people didn't uh, the movement strength playing christmas podcast yes sorry but yeah but you know christmas episode good so um it's this time of year and people start to reflect on things a little bit potentially as we wind towards the new year um i'm still now... reflecting on not having achieved a front lever in 2018 <laughs> <laughs> don't worry you CrossFit now, anyway. So Ooh. It Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so um, training-wise, just a little bit of like, th like thoughts and philosophy on how it's changed over this last year, or even potentially like since the whole pandemic thing, because there's been an awful lot of like train at home. Then you've actually gone back to a gym now. Like I still just do everything at home interested to know like for, for but I'm, I'm interested to know myself from you but also like i'm sure the listeners will like what's what is training looking like now what's the what's the purpose of it how's that sort of changed over over the year i think uh, uh, you gave me a, a tease before the podcast started this is the only one that's was, um, what yeah. the questions were and so my mind has been churning while you were banging on about ringing bells at church, uh, which I'm down with, <laughs> to be honest, before anyone makes a judgment on that. I like bells at church. Um, anyway, so I feel like I try to look back and go, what's the last 12 months been like? You know, when did the pandemic, I know it's not finished yet, but like when did things start to get a bit easier? I can't even remember. Was it, were we in lockdown last, this time last year? We were, weren't we, for Christmas? I just chat with Catherine. Out. My timeline has just completely got upside down. I don't know where we are. Yeah, because... She heard that where she works, the gym like closed down, and they were doing their like health side of things was still open. And I was like, "So what?" I couldn't even remember. Then it was like, "Yeah, no, like last Christmas was locked earlier down this last year. year. Everything was closed again." Yeah, everything. yeah, like after Christmas, I, I couldn't. Yeah, we had couldn't, a circuit I break or remember. something, didn't we? But to be honest, I let's say that the, the COVID pandemic has probably been fairly transformative on my training because I've been through quite a lot of cycles with it. So. I had left the gym before the pandemic. Then I got into training at home. We had a great summer the first year of the pandemic. So I really enjoyed training outside and I really mm -hmm. embraced what I was kind of flagging as the no gym lifestyle. Like it was great. Like I, I had a lot of um, a lot of enjoyment training relatively simply in my garden with a basic rig, um, just kind of getting after, after that side of things. And, and, I, and I liked that. And then I got to the stage, I think, probably over this summer i did a lot of outdoor training again this summer I started moving a little bit more into kind of like i did a weight vest challenge um and i mm. did more like lower body strength work with my sandbags and was just kind of started to get a little bit of of a flavor or temptation back to go into some more kind of strength and conditioning type environment which is where i started with a lot of my training from really after well, i got a bro splits out the way then i did a lot of strength and conditioning and then got into calisthenics <laughs> And I was just kind of, I've, I've realized that there was a piece of my training that was missing. So, you know, I took on the, this weight vest challenge and it was an obscene amount of volume um, of running and lunges and weighted work in pull-ups and dips. And I was like, 
there's just I just I felt like there was a piece missing, and the weighted work kind of gave me a little bit of just um, of a taste back for, for for that kind of thing. I, I started to like how it made me feel, particularly in the lower body. I, I was like walking and running. I was like, Do you know what? I feel like I've got strong legs again, and I've said that for a long time. That's not like a change in direction or philosophy yeah. for me. I've gone like calisthenics is great for the upper body, but if you want to get progressive overload in the lower body, you need to use weights. Always said that. Yeah. Um, so, and then the other thing was, that's kind of been a bit transformative was I, I kind of just got a bit bored of training by myself. Like I was actually probably struggling to find the motivation to put myself through yeah. really kind of like relatively tough sessions. Um, so yeah, I made the, um, I made the, what some will consider to be an audacious decision. Maybe some would even think hypocritical based on what I've said in the past before, but there's probably a bigger conversation now. I don't see myself as hypocrite just as a rethinking and explorative mindset um, I joined CrossFit because I wanted for a number of different things I wanted uh, to go and train with some of the people I actually bear in mind I've been a strength and conditioning coach for something like 13 years I can't remember before I started at the CrossFit box when I went to a session and somebody told me what to do like mm. I'm always having to set sessions and it's just nice oh, isn't it to be I just rock up and go, what are we doing today? Okay, I can do yeah. that. And, and especially where my mind's at, you know, I think like, <clears throat> I'm going to go bigger, uh, a bit broader, you know, like the, the cost of the pandemic and it has changed the way that I work. So I find myself, sometimes I look at my watch at the end of the day and I'm embarrassed to admit this. I might have done 1,500 steps in a day because I just don't leave the house. And like having that obsession about what does a productive day look like if I'm not in front of my computer because when we're in the pandemic product productivity probably was relatively high to a point because it was super focused we couldn't go and do anything else and that's almost kind of changed my mindset of just going not making any time for myself so I was the benefit of training at home was I could do half an hour 45 minutes and I could be back at my computer and I was rushing to get back to work um and I just think I've got to the stage where I'm, I'm like I, going somewhere to train and have someone telling me what to do just frees up some bandwidth in my mind. And I don't have one less thing for me to think about on a mind which I feel is pretty tired, having been through some challenges over the last two years. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the same type of feedback that we've, and then we mentioned at the start of the, uh, the podcast, the, the six week bodyweight basics are starting in, in January. We've done um, a six week mobility one and, and a couple of times with me and Georgie. And, some of the feedback of, of that has been like, yeah, obviously the stuff we were doing was great and people making really good change with the body. But one of the big feedbacks was like, just having that accountability mm. to turn up the same time every week and you guys like, tell me what to do. Um, and yeah, no, it, it's one of those, you see, I, I randomly seen some posts on Instagram this week, but you see them time and time and time again, like very good coaches going, oh yeah, I've had a coach. Like they, they might be like one of the, one of the leading mm. coaches in whatever. And it's like for their training, they're like, oh yeah, someone else does my training. Like I don't do it myself because we need it, it's, you know, we need that accountability. And I think that there's, and well, it sort of leads me into another question I had, or my other question for you was, um, and it, it, it yeah, it, you, you've, you're sort of delving into it already. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out there of <clears throat> what have we learned this year? And, and that could be, what have you learned from training or just from life in general? Like what things have you learned about yourself or, because when we know more about ourselves, then you know what then, like you, you can make that decision to go, okay, so I'm going to join a gym because I know for myself, mm. this is what did it. And then it starts to help plug some of those things for us. And it can be, it can be a training related stuff or just like life related stuff. I'd be interested. Yeah. I think for me, it's like. Um, I'll just spitball a couple of bits briefly. I think it's, I do think about there's a value in consistency of, of just got to stay the course. I think that's kind of like, you know, we've had so many um, ups and downs over the last two years and, and, and business and work has been challenging. Like I have a, have a number of different, like I've got obviously this business and I've got some consultancy work that I do and, and it just, it's all kind of like up and down all over the place. Um, training, if I'm being honest, has been up and down. It hasn't really been consistent. I haven't had a specific thing necessary that I was working towards. Um, and I think it's just, I think the thing for me that I've probably learned is that and it's just a reminder because you probably knew it, but I'm a big, what this, I can tell you what thing has taught me this last couple of years or this year is that you don't know something until you've experienced it. 
often in that kind of thing like you've got to, if you want to be resilient you've got to go through hardship you, you cannot teach someone resilience unless they go through personal difficulty so i think that's been part of kind of what shaped this kind of thought in my mind of going there has been some challenges i have been resilient through sort of a number of different things um but what i've got to try and do and where the value is and i don't always get it right there's been times when my training has really dropped off is the consistency of turning up to work or to my business every day and just doing the best thing i can turning up to the contract that i can do and doing the best that i can consistently trying to do some form of training um has been like one of the biggest things that i think i've, I've just appreciated and and especially at this stage of life where i'm at like i'm 41 years old i've got two kids one of those is a, is a nine month old baby um i've got some businesses which have had some challenges and all sorts of stuff going on over the last couple of years as many people have been in a similar situation to me um what, what have we got to do to get through those times? Because we, sometimes we can't hurry those along. No one's had any control over how long this pandemic is going to take, really. We can do our little mm. bits, but like it's going to roll. It's going to take as long as it takes. Um, but what we can do is all just rock up consistently and just one day at a time. That's been my motto for the year, one day at a time. But as long as I try <coughs> and do that one day at a time, things tend to move in the right direction, not without disruption and not without challenges, but it is that consistency of turning up, doing the work, mm. And those small things, that small action that you take on a daily basis, those things consolidate over the period of 12 months. And I'm in a place now where like, yeah, generally we're, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel on both training and family and, um, and work and all, all that sort of thing. Is that yeah. where you wanted to go? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that deep? No, nice. Yeah. No, deep. I'm, I, we want to go deep. It did. Death it's deep but where... cliche, isn't it? Like you go on to Instagram Connection and is... find a motivation account, yeah. so you're gonna go one percent better every day. But it, it like, yeah. but this is what I mean. Like you, you can read that and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But until you've done yeah. it, you actually don't know it. Yeah. Until you've experienced yeah. it. No. Go on, you give me yeah. your side. Yeah, no. I don't spend well, all the time talking about myself, Jack. No, no. My my two pence and, and a little little bit related to that of going like the process of understanding um, ourselves better, helping us to then make choices around what we do to um so that we can be the best versions of ourselves like something that i've um learned this year sort of this is a sort of outside of training but training is related to it because it's one of the things i love to do is like when i when i look after myself my health whether that be physical mental and otherwise then by being having a little bit of like prioritizing that which can sometimes feel a bit of like uh guilt towards like that selfish putting yourself first but only to put myself in the place where i can then be the best version of myself if that's me doing a session with the school guy says or working with a client or just with being a a, a son a, a brother of whatever it, whatever like hat i've got on like being the best version of that and a little bit that i I guess it's one one th something for me. This is what my wife gets mad. She even said it to me about this uh, last night. We were listening to something, and like I've said to her, like we have these types of conversations, or we will listen to a podcast, and it'll, I'll then like go have like a bit of a realization of like, oh yeah, so da da da. Don't matter what it is. She'll be like, yeah, we we've been talking about this for like six months. I've told you this about a hundred times. Like, how are you only just now realizing that? I'm like. I'm a simple guy with a little brain. I've got, it, I've got it. It takes me a bit of time for these things to sink in. And I, one thing that um, I know, I knew, I had, a, I knew this a long time ago when, um, and people heard me talk about it before, about um, losing motivation for training when I had to retire from rugby from head injury, and it sort of it, it challenged me in that I was like, oh, I thought I was really motivated for training when I haven't got something to aim for at the end of the week. All of a sudden, I'm not motivated. We're like, what's all that about? And I've known then this for a long time. And we talked about like calisthenics giving us those goals and whatnot. Interestingly, this year, when I signed up to do a marathon, the amount of focus, not focus is probably the wrong word, but just the, the intention that I then had and started to be more consistent with running because it was like, crikey, in October, I'm going to run a marathon. I don't want this to be completely horrendous. Like if I'd have done no training, I'd have still turned up and just crawled around but i wanted it to be a nice experience um and it's something the, the it's something that i've noticed that like okay it relates back to that it's going oh okay i've set myself something that i've got to go and do and it can be quite far ahead and i'll still have intentions to do it like i've got a couple of things i've got something in my head that i want to do next year um which is called the ring of fire 
Um, it's a hundred odd miles coast, the ho- doing the whole coast of Anglesey, little island that's on North Wales. So it's a hundred odd miles in three days. Um, and I haven't signed up for it yet, but in my mind, I've like I'm trying to accept it. So then, and then there's a then there's an even there's a cra- a stupid thing I want to try and do the year after potentially depending on how there's it an goes. Event but, called, um, in, I think I remember I went to university in Bradford. There's an event in Bradford called the Ring of Fire. <laughs> oh, there it is. Shout out to Bradford Curry Shops. <laughs> Great curries in Bradford. But um, yeah, the, the, having 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 something to go towards, I know, like helps me. It can be quite far ahead, and I just need to make the commitment to signing up to this other one. Um, and then uh, and then I, I, I really enjoy just being part of something. You know, going and doing something. You'll notice it with you go and do a CrossFit session on your own. The difference between doing it when other people are there, like going and running that marathon that I did, if I'd have done it on my own, I 100% would have gone slower and it would 100% been more brutal. Um, just being, feeling like we're part of something, being part of like something bigger than ourselves and just not just doing it for ourselves, like all those things. Like I know that I, I just love those feelings. And so knowing that, like just think of, okay, so when can I, when can I facilitate those situations to happen um, in for, for for next year and, and 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 moving forward in like all sorts of areas of it life, it just gives you the impetus, doesn't it? Like you're going to go and do it because you've committed to something, and that just that channels yeah. your attention and focus, and you will get yeah. it done and you'll enjoy it. So, yeah, there's definitely like it, it, really, it feels like it's a little bit of probably people have heard this sort of stuff before, but there is a big difference. Whereas you've probably signed up for more stuff that you committed to this year than you've done before that I probably can remember. I'd- I wouldn't have. I've, I'd never signed up to anything. Yeah, before. that's what I mean. But you, but you've been, you would have been somebody in the past who would have talked quite strongly about goal setting and achieving goals. Yeah, but this yeah. is actually for, even for someone in your shoes who could have like given a who was well practiced in that area. You've still found another level to that because you've committed to something, which a lot of yeah. some well, people would do. That, like some people would do that as a basic, like as like I'm just going to commit to yeah. going to these events and put these things yeah, in my diary, yeah. and that's that's what I train for. Um, yeah. Well, I think if you go, depending on, so I was like, I've always been like big on goal setting, but the the, the real goals that I had before when I was, when you were playing like a sport, like rugby, they're like, they're just set for you. They're there every mm. week. Like it's set for you in terms of like there is, and then you've got next season and that's the thing. And, the, and so I think that I, I shied away from just realizing that actually I just need to need to set some concrete ones, not just ones that are, okay, I've set myself a goal, I've written down, I'm going to do this, and if I don't do it, then what does it matter? Like, whereas when you sign up to an event, then it's happening on that day yeah. and you've got to go and do it. So when they talk about, like, smarter goals, like having, you know, time being one of them, the T in that, like, having a, where it's it's going to be, it's, it's happening now, like, you got to do I'm it. I'm going to sign up for one next yeah. year. It's in September. Uh, what's it called? Core 6, I think it's called. But it's like a combination of a, fun- of a fitness competition with an obstacle course race, but like not like overly engineered. So it's kind of like it's outdoor on a country estate and it's got like three lakes in it for running. It's got like, it's got, it's like the, the videos of it. I think it's called core six, but I think, um, six teams, six mixed teams of, of six, three guys, three girls. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign up for that one in September. I think it looks like, yeah, it's an outdoorsy sort of like climb some ropes, run nice. up a muddy hill, go for a swim in the lake, do some other horrible things. <laughs> two day event so that's I think I'm going to focus on that one for next year nice great stuff great stuff well that brings us to the end of uh, today's little Christmas pod hope everyone has an amazing Christmas and you're looking forward to it and you're on the wind down into it now as we are I think this is out on the will it be the 15th what, you, what do you cook over That'd Christmas Jacob what, you, we, let's finish off with a little bit of food related oh. what is what yeah. means Christmas to you food wise uh, well, you mentioned pigs in blanket. Yeah. Sorry for anyone that's um, not a meat. There. Yeah, it's, not a meat uh, or pork eater. It's, it's pig, double, pigs in double blanket pork. all the way. Ga- gammon, uh, Christmas Eve gammon. Mm-hmm. That's uh, what, one you got of it from Piper's. I tried to do my Piper's order the day. Yeah. It's all sold out. We did, we left it too yeah, late. Yeah, yeah. We ordered about a month yeah, ago. Yeah, we left it. Uh, yeah, gammon. We got we got a we got a turkey from Piper's. We got a gammon from Piper's. We got like a. Uh, a mutton shank. Mm-hmm. You seen a mutton mm-hmm. shank? It's really massive. I was like, can barely fit it in there. Yeah, we're uh, we will be eating well. Yeah, and that was what I was going to say. I uh, my current training 
is I'm playing with the my my version of Bulk and Bendit, the Bulk and Bendit <laughs> program, which <laughs> is picking up momentum. Well, there's a, there's uh, a movement to more people about it. There is <laughs> yes, there is. It is a. It's it, a becoming yeah, it a, thing. a thing. A throwaway it comment is, a is thing. becoming a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. It is happening. It is currently being experimented with and formulated. Mm. Um, and in due course, me and Tim will launch probably. Are we going to do it as a live? Is it a live name. course, or is it going to be a, a like a follow along on your own time? <laughs> Just dropped a glass. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Christmas sherry. Um, it didn't break, though, fortunately. Uh, well, we'll come back to Bulk and Bendy. To be, to be, to be, to be confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. Something else that's coming in the pipeline for those of you that are like going to be, after Christmas, all pumped up about what you're going to do uh, for 2022 uh, uh, is the annual... We will have an annual offer happening, so uh, keep an eye out for that. It's going to be launching on Boxing Day uh, if you are excited, keep an eye on your inbox. You will get it. Uh, if you sign up for our newsletter and get our emails, it will be in your inbox. On and you have access to all of our content for an incredibly good value price. Uh, it's not even, I'm not even going to say it's an investment, Jacko. It's not an investment. It's a no-brainer how good our <laughs> annual offer is for what you get. Yeah. So check that out. Don't miss out. It's an absolute belter. And it, what it gives you is it gives you that, that, uh, that um, consistency or the opportunity to be consistent and signed up for an entire year and it's about what progress you can make in a year than what broke than trying to search for any sort of like quick fixes that's our philosophy on training and probably on life in general so keep an eye out for that otherwise for me and timbo merry christmas have a great one merry christmas and uh we will see you i would say happy new no, but i think we'll, we'll i think you'll hear from us before new year so um, we'll save the new year chat for then Keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play, and a turkey or two. <laughs> and enjoy those pigs in blankets. Class dismissed. <laughs>